In this tutorial, we'll be learning how to add primers to Reloading Studio. The first thing we're going to do is click on our Components or Settings icon, and we'll end up in the Options screen. And from here, we'll select Primers. Uh, primers is a reasonably small screen, so while at it, we'll discuss other options which are present, and they'll translate directly to all the other screens in the, in the software. The first one is batch. Uh, batch is kind of important. For example, let's say you've purchased two, three identical boxes. Batch is the way to link a particular box or a particular quantity uh, to a particular cartridge without losing track of which one it is. For example, let's say you've purchased two boxes over two years and you'd like to know which particular cartridge is using which particular box. Of, uh, or which particular primer. Uh, perhaps the quality went up or the quality went down and you want to know and you want to track that. So there's three ways of adding batch. The first one is obviously keeping this software generated batch ID. It's here to speed things up for those people who don't mind. Uh, the other way is obviously to add an actual primer batch number which is usually stamped on the box somewhere or use your own convention. And in this case, I'll be using my own convention. So, for example, let's say I'm purchasing federal primers for large rifle, and I've purchased them in 2017. Um, at this stage, I can add as much or as little information as I want. Uh, I'll start with quantity. I purchased a thousand uh, of federal primers, large rifle, and the model number is 210, also printed on the box. Uh, at this stage, we, we're good. We're ready to save once we click the Save button. And here they are. You'll notice that the form is now cleared and the primer is stored. Uh, we can select the primer for editing or viewing by either clicking on the pencil icon or somewhere in the row, and the form is populated again. Uh, if we want to add a new prep, so all we have to do is click the new primer button. Once we do that, the form is cleared and we can start again. So I'll add another primer, which is, uh, let's say, Winchester Large Pistol, uh, again, 2017, also 1000 Winchester type, Large Pistol, model number in this case is WL P and save. So there's a few controls that we can use now in here and we'll start with the most obvious one and that's delete. So we can actually delete a component. Uh, the other one is clone. So for instance if you want to add more primers similar to the ones you already have we can just clone a particular record, the, the one that closely represents the new, new component and we'll see it here. That's that's our clone. So in this case, I want to add federal small rifle primers, and that's about it. Small thousand two hundred and five. Save. Here we are. The last option is archive. So if I click the archive, let's say I'm archiving federal large rifle. It will push it down to the um, to the end of the list and disable the component from being edited or prevent the component from being edited. Uh, once we start building cartridges, we'll also see that this particular component is present, but it's grayed out and there's a different icon against it. And the reason for this is, let's say you already have a cartridge recipe which is using this particular batch of primers and you're out of primers. You don't want to delete this because it's already linked into your cartridge recipe. However, you don't want to use it or change it in any way. So that's how you do it. Uh, the alternative to that is you can unarchive it if you, let's say, decap some cartridges and reusing the primer, or you can clone it and then archive it again. So in this case, we've purchased, let's say, another box Let's say this is a second box for 2017 that we've purchased um, on a slightly different date. 
nothing else changes and we can save and here it is old new and of course we can unarchive and if the component is not being used anywhere we can just go ahead and delete it as well and that's about it